can you exist before your before your mum, before your mother? Yeah. What, what what would be your response? Well, rationally, rationally, rationally speaking, I'd be like, no, because my mother gave birth to me. Exactly. Yeah. So the fact that you know we as human beings, we are rational beings as well as emotions, we should utilize our rationality to come to conclusion, right? So what the brother here just postulate is what you could deductive reasoning that's laid out in the Quran. So deductive reasoning basically means that there are certain premises that if you're able to falsify each premise, then whatever the premise is left has to be true, whether you like it or not. So the, so the brother here said that, you know, the universe cannot come from nothing because nothing itself cannot bring you to something, right? Non-existence cannot bring you to existence, right? So we can rule that option out. The universe cannot create itself because because you cannot exist and not exist at the same time. It's, it's equivalent to saying that your mother gave birth to yourself. So we can rule that out. So what's the only option that is left? That there has to be the creator that always existed. Always existed. That has no beginning, no end. That has the will, had the intention to bring the universe into existence. Has the knowledge to bring the universe into existence. And has the power. Has the capability to bring the universe into existence. And what we say is this what the beauty about Islam is. Islam aligns your sound intellect with your natural inclination. Right? So this Almighty God that we define is one and only. Not three in one, not two in one like Christianity and Hinduism, no. One and only, unique. God is self-sufficient. Meaning that he doesn't need anything to sustain himself. He, is, he sustains himself in what befits his majesty, right? We as human beings, we need to eat to keep ourselves alive. But God doesn't require to eat. God doesn't require to drink. Because God is, you know, he's all powerful, he's almighty. Why does he need something from his creation to sustain himself? Whereas we as creation, we depend upon him. Do you understand? Yeah? He begets not nor is he begotten. In other words, that the God that we are talking about doesn't father children, doesn't have a wife, doesn't produce offspring, right? And he's not born because if he was born, he has a beginning. And that, that defies the definition of God. And there's nothing like unto him. So in Islam, we don't have any representation of God because God is, you know, beyond our, you know, con we cannot conceive, you know, how God looks like. So anything that we represent, whether in statues or images, we don't say this is God because he's beyond that. It, it doesn't befit his majesty for us to, you know, you know, give images to him because we don't know how he looks like, right? However, we affirm his existence. So Almighty God has given us a purpose in this life, which is the purpose of our life is to worship him. Why? It's not the fact that God needs worship. It's the fact that if we, like the brother said, it doesn't make sense if the creator just leaves us alone without any instruction manual. Like for example, like if I was to get a simple phone, it doesn't make sense that the manufacturer of this phone would, would not give us any instruction manual. Yeah, because otherwise we, we as human beings, how would we be able to know how the phone functions if there's no instruction manual? So Almighty God, by his wisdom, he sends prophets and messengers with guidance. How should we lead our life? Now, the purpose of our existence, it makes sense that the Creator will give us purpose, right? Yeah, he'll give us purpose of existence. The purpose of our existence is to worship him. Why should we worship him? Because look how many blessings that God has given us. We cannot even like, we cannot even quantify. Like Allah says in the Quran, Allah is basically mean the God in, in, in Arabic. Allah says in the Quran that if you were to count the blessings of Allah, you will never be able to enumerate. The fact that you're riding your bike, you have the ability. The fact that your heart is pumping. Why isn't your heart pumping? Because somebody's controlling, somebody's monitoring. There's a program in your body. So in return, shouldn't we be grateful to the Creator? If I was to ask you this simple question, that I'll give you two million pounds on the condition that you give me, on the, uh, if I'll give you two million pounds, what would you say to me? If I, if I have two million pounds, and I really like you, you're a great person, you're a decent person, and I'm very rich, I can give two million pounds. What would you say to me? Well, I would, I would say, firstly, why me? And secondly, like, um, what are you going to benefit from giving me? So I'd answer, where's the... Because I care about you. I care about you. So if I, if I was to give you two million pounds, what would you say to me, at least? What's the least? I would say, what can I give you for it? Well, I, I think I would be like, I would probably not take it from you, firstly, because I wouldn't... Well, you're not... Well, the thing is, you don't, you don't deserve the two million pounds, but because of, out of my love, out of my respect to you, because you're a decent human being, I feel I want to give you two million pounds because you're in need for help. What would you say to me? What's the least? Even if you don't accept the offer, what would you at least say? Well, I'd have to thank you for your... For thank your, you. Yeah. Thank you. And you never forget me, right? Because two million pounds is the big offer. Yeah. Right. Now I'll change the condition. I'll give you two million pounds in the condition that you give me your two eyes. You ever do it? 
Why? Because money can never be a substitute with the ability to see the world around. Absolutely right. So you value your two eyes more than two million pounds. So why don't we be grateful to the one who gave us two eyes for free? Yeah. Does that make sense? It does, of course, make sense. And I yeah. think if you, if you, if you, you know, if I was in a position to believe it, that there was a higher being out there, whatever there may be, you yes. know, I don't know what, as you say, what form it is. And I, and I do subscribe to your belief that yeah. if there is a higher being, it's we don't know quite which form it takes. It's not like a, absolutely it's not like the figure of Jesus, whatever that you know. That's a, that's a um, that's a construct, like kind of like well, it's a Western construct, to be honest. Or yeah. Like Asian construct. So it's like. I don't, I, I, I object to that kind of, you know. What do you object, sorry? Well, I object to like, the, the, the Lord being seen as like, you know, as in like, Jesus Christ, or like, the, uh, God, whoever is that is, you know, it's like, I, I, What I kind think, of God do you, what kind of God do you not no, subscribe? I don't, think, I don't think we're, if there is a higher being, I'm not sure we, uh, it's probably not something we'd recognise in like, as human form, I'm not sure, I don't know what it is. It is. But then we can recognise his existence, because, for example, if I, for example, if you see, if you see a camel passing by in the desert, right? Forget about forget about camel. The fact that you can see this building right here, right? You know that you know you don't need to recognize who created it. You just know that there must be a creator behind this building. So similarly, what we say is God has given us. God has left His signs. Look at the creation around you. Look at your own existence. You know, there's a powerful argument in the Quran. By the way, we believe the Quran is a speech of God that was dictated to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him through the angel Gabriel. And there's a powerful verse in the Quran. Allah wants us to, you know, reflect our own existence. Allah says, has there not been a period of time when human beings were not even worthy to be mentioned? In other words, Allah is, wants us to reflect that you were nothing. We were nothing. We were just a fluid, a, 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 an insignificant fluid. But look how Allah has created from this insignificant fluid into, look at us, proportionate. We can think. We can make decisions. We have free will. You're able to ride your bike. You know, this is amazing, which is, it, it's supposed to humble us that, look, at one point you didn't exist. You were just a, a, a mingled fluid, a, an insignificant fluid, a gooey fluid. And look at you right now. You know, handsome individual, you know, yeah? It's, it's amazing. So in return, shouldn't we be grateful to the Creator? That should be the purpose of our life. If there is grace, then obviously yes, we should. Obviously yes, we should, but I just don't. I don't think I'm in a position where we're not here to. Yet, so. Absolutely, we're not here to force you. What we do is, we as Muslims, we only here to convey the message of Islam. That's it. We're not here to force you. If you still doubt that there's the Creator, that's absolutely fine. However, you know, reflect upon what the brother said, what I said, sir. Yeah. It is good to reflect. It's good to hear yeah. something like you say that. I think it does make you. And we, and just to let you go, because I know. Uh, thank you for taking your time out, because I know you. Got, but just one more thing. We believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is not the founder of Islam. It's not Islam is not a new message. There's a lot of misconception that they say that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's the founder of Islam. We don't say that. Islam, by definition, means submission. You submit to the will of the one true God, the one who created us, right? We believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came. He was the final messenger and he was given the final book, which is the Quran, to confirm the message of the previous prophets. So we believe in Adam, we believe in Noah, Abraham, Moses, J Jesus, peace be upon all of them. We believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he did not come with a new message. He didn't come and preach about Trinity, because even Trinity doesn't make sense to you. I know that. I know Trinity doesn't make sense to you. We don't believe in that. How does it make sense that, you know, prophets of the Old Testament preach the oneness of God and then all of a sudden, Jesus comes and preaches about Trinity. It, it doesn't make sense. If God is one and only, why would God's nature change all of a sudden to three and one? So, so it doesn't make sense to you. This is the reason why Islam is not a new message. Islam, is, Islam has been there since time immemorial. Since the first man, Adam, peace be upon him, he was a pure monotheist. So we don't believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came with a new message, with a new religion. No, he came with the same message that all the previous prophets came with. However, the difference between Christianity and Islam is that they say that Jesus is God. But you cannot say Jesus is God because God is supposed to be all-powerful, correct? All-powerful meaning that, you know, he has power over everything. But what do you Christians say? He comes down as a man, gets stripped naked and, and, and gets beaten up by his own creation. That doesn't make sense to you, right? If he's supposed to be all-powerful, how come he's getting beaten up and stripped naked by his own creation? It doesn't make sense. We don't ascribe any description to God like this. God is perfect in his knowledge, in his power. It does not defeat his majesty to come down as a man and get beaten up by his own creation. It goes against your 
natural inclination. And this is why we say Islam is an innate religion. Islam is a natural, it's, it's, a, it's an original state that all the human beings were born with, but because of the society, because of the Jews and Christians teaching their child to worship Jesus or to, or to worship fire, they deviated. So that's the reason why when a person becomes a Muslim, we don't call them a convert, we call them a revert. We say you come back to the original state that you submit to the will of the one true creator. And that is the message of Islam, the oneness of God, that we worship him alone, we should be grateful to him, we should thank him. The fact that he's given you two eyes, you will never exchange for two million pounds, right? As we agree. So have a think, you know, I, I like to keep it simple. I don't, like, I don't want to take much of your time, but have a chance if you have the Quran, it is a copy of the Quran, you can find it here. Um, if you want, I can ask one of the brothers to give you the copy. It's an English translation. Fantastic, fantastic. And look at the message that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came with. In fact, there was a, a book written by Michael H. Hart. Uh, he, book, he wrote a book with the 100 most influential figure in history. And he puts Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the most influential human being in history. Why? He gives a reason. He says that the choice of placing Muhammad, peace be upon him, may be controversial to some readers, but he was the only man that was able to achieve not only on religious level, but secular level. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came with perfect legislation from God. Islam came here with five objectives. One is religion, you know, to give us purpose, to give us purpose in our life, which is to worship the Creator alone. Because if, if, if we don't have a purpose in life, then why are we here? So God has given us a purpose to worship Him. Islam came here to preserve wealth. That's the reason why interest is prohibited. You know, more like interest loans and you know usury is prohibited because we know that interest is destructive to society, right? That's what gambling is prohibited. Yeah. So Islam came here to preserve wealth. Islam came here to preserve your intellect. Why? Because we as humans, we are intelligent beings. Allah says in the Quran, "Walakada karram, wa bani Adam," that we have honored all the children of Adam. He honored you. So all magical wants to preserve your intellect, that's the reason why alcohol is prohibited. Why? Alcohol is prohibited because what, it, what does it do to you? It makes you intoxicated. In fact, I'll give you statistics. In America, 13% of those Americans who are under the influence of alcohol, they commit incest. You know what incest means? Having relationship with their blood sisters and blood brothers. But why? Because it's, it's humiliation. You know from your natural inclination that no one needs to justify you why incest is wrong, right? You just know it's wrong. Like, oh, how can I have a relationship with my blood mother, my blood father, right? So Islam here to preserve your intellect. So that's why alcohol is prohibited. Islam also came here to preserve your reputation. That if someone accuses you, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not just gonna believe. I said no, you gotta provide evidence. Somebody say you slept with your, you slept with, you, you had an affair with your. You, you cheated your wife, you slept with someone. I can't just take it. Islam says no, evidence, four witnesses. There has to be four reliable witnesses. Otherwise, if these four reliable witnesses are not trustworthy, they're not proven, you know what you know what happens? They get lashed. Why? Because they're trying to they're trying to um, uh, they try to uh, make you humiliated. So Islam came to preserve your honor, your reputation. So have a think about the Master of Islam, the core Master of Islam to worship the Creator alone. He has no partners, he has no rivals. And Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him came with the final guidance. So have a chance to read the Quran. And uh, I, I thank you for taking your time. Thank you very much. May Allah guide you. Take care. Thank you very much. Take care. Salam. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, uh, I hope you're on the best of health in Iman. Ameen. So alhamdulillah, uh, we had a, uh, a gentleman here he's an atheist uh, previously brother sam uh, gave arguments from the quran to uh, prove the existence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, and afterwards you know sam dawa wanted wanted me to take over the discussion so i just gave him the basic message of islam the core message of islam which is you know we should submit to the creator the creator alone you know give us a purpose in life which is to worship him alone and we should be grateful to him. And we encourage the brother to look into Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to look at the message that he came with, uh, you know, to read the Quran and to, to look at the lifestyle of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, he said that he has a copy of the Quran. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our da'wah, ameen, and pray for intention. Wa jazakallahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.